Exodiac 85X presents Team XC. Hello and welcome everyone on YouTube. I know I'm at the desktop doing a more professional video and you don't see me from mobile. But this is what I'd like to do a little bit more. But that's not why we're here. This is why I mainly had to get to the desktop. Um, okay, right here it says, A number of studies have shown that plants feel pain and vegetables are picked and often eaten while still alive. Animal rights activists are often in the news, but has anyone ever protested for vegetable rights? And I know some of you are thinking, well, we knew that they felt, you know, some sort of uh, stimuli, but this is insane. Why is there a movement? No, guys, this is how you defeat that vegan teacher. You don't get it. Um, well, look, let me scroll down. Hold on. Um, right here, it says, it seems none of you understand the definition of pain. Pain is defined as a signal of present or impending tissue damage affected by a harmful stimulus and thus is experienced by almost all multicellular organisms. You hear that? That means anything that breaks, that's still experiencing pain, which proves right here that plants feel pain. And actually, vegetables are still alive for some time because it takes a while for them to rot out. So, they do feel pain. But, let me continue reading. Okay. The question, the question isn't whether or not plants feel pain. The question is, why is it okay to cause pain to plants but not animals? Keep in mind, not all plants react to pain in the same way. Not all animals feel pain the same way. Lobsters. You guys know that. This is part of a much more complex argument. We need to ask some tough questions. Is it wrong to harm people? Do plants and animals have the same rights as people to be free from harm? Do they have any rights at all? What kind of diet is within our nature, and why should we second-guess doing what is natural? Good luck. That right there tells you everything. So that means every person that has been telling you that plants don't feel pain, that they don't feel pain, has been lying to you this entire time. See, because pain is harmful stimuli. So basically they say, you know, plants feel stimuli. But harmful stimuli that's still an experience of pain so plants can die vegetables can die you know so i'm going to be reading a little bit more so i'm going to go to another site now for you guys so i can read uh, a bit more to you in the encyclopedia okay now this is where it gets really funny Below me, you can see right here, stop eating vegetables. <laughs> okay, here we go, guys. You ready for this one? Let's go ahead and read vegetable rights. For the treatment of human vegetables, see whatever that is. I won't be looking into that. Um, right now, we're just focused on what it says in the encyclopedia. So anyways, it says... Vegetable rights are defined as undeniable rights possessed by plants and other non-animal living things. Vegetable rights activists believe in the natural rights of vegetables and other plant life. These groups oppose all forms of plant bondage and genocide, including the keeping of house plants, which are referred to as slave plants in the movement. Vegetable gardens, family farming, and commercial farming, landscaping, tree trimming, 
grass mowing, and public parks. Okay, and it says, Although united in their opposition to the eating of plants, there are several subgroups of VR activists. Carnivores and meditarians advocate the eating of animal products, while others also abhor this practice on the grounds that plant bondage and genocide would be required to rear animals as well. Fungitarians only accept the eating of mushrooms and other fungi, as fungi are a parasitic and therefore have no rights. While junketarians promote only eating non-life form based products such as chewy plastics, styrofoam, and things from McDonald's and vending machines. Nuffetarians eat nothing at all and die. Wow, the bogusness. Okay, guys, this is the last part down here. This is the history section. So go ahead and keep up with me. The vegetable and plants rights movement got its start in the wake of the many, many rights struggles of the 60s. Unaffiliated activists Herman and Olivia Thunk, called by some the Adam and Eve of vegetable rights, expressed dismay at not being able to play a pioneering role in any movement and sought out a previously unchampioned cause. This was more difficult than it sounds, and after several years and aborted efforts in the areas of animal rights, anti-nuclear, anti-coal, anti-solar, pro-coal, anti-humanitarian, pro-golf, and hobbit rights? What in the world is hobbit rights? The pair settled... The pair settled on vegetable rights and focused PETV, People for the Ethical Treatment of Vegetables. After a copyright lawsuit from PETA, <laughs> we knew that was going to happen, was filed in 1981, the group changed its name to Pea Stove. <laughs> Pea Stove. People for the Equal, Ethical, Sympathetic Treatment of Vegetables Everywhere. How do you like that, guys? Well, there you have it. That is basically the history of vegetable rights, and this is how we will defeat that vegan teacher. So who's with me? Vegetable rights groups. And don't forget, we need to get Gabe. He's the ultimate plants rights activist. So who's with me, guys? Also, guys, when I say defeat that vegan teacher, I'm talking about logic-wise. Don't go and harass her or anything. Just make a video. Make a video, and I'm sure she'll see it, or tag me in it. But anyways, guys, this is to prove that we can eat animals. We could eat what we want. Because if plants feel pain, and animals feel pain, then everything in general has the ability to feel pain. They say lobsters don't and maybe certain plants. Um, I don't know how that works. I just know plants can feel harmful stimuli. Everything has that ability. But do I know specifically what they feel? No, of course not. But that's how you define pain is harmful stimuli. So if something can get wounded, then obviously it should be able to feel pain. As far as insects go, they're a little bit different. I don't know, but I'm sure if they can feel stimuli, then maybe. They say lobsters don't feel pain, and it's been proven, but who knows? Like I said, with stimuli, if they can feel that, then obviously it's different. If it's just reaction for them and they don't feel stimuli, then they don't feel pain. But I'm just saying, guys. Anyways, I hope you guys learned something here, and remember, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. If you guys keep subscribing, I'll keep making videos. But it's up to you guys. Let's bring this channel back up, guys. Help me out here. And I'll see you guys later. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe.